Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Um, we're gonna we're gonna continue from what we did on Friday, which was like the stuff that we did, like the more complex rational functions. Those notes right there. Okay. So we'll talk about more complex rational functions second day. <coughs> day two. And we'll kind of continue on from what we were talking about on um, Friday. So let me see how I can organize myself. I don't want to get like out of, out of whack here. All right, so let me kind of summarize some of the components of graphing um, complex rational functions. So the different parts, the different parts, right? Components, parts, right? The different parts of graphing complex rational functions. Things that we want to be able to do, right? So for example, we should be able to do domain and range of that rational function. Okay. And how we do that domain and range is going to depend on some of these other components too. How we do the domain range is going to depend on how we do those other components too. All right. The domain restrictions will lead us to vertical asymptotes okay, so the ID there for identify. Uh, let me put it down here. Okay, the domain restrictions are going to identify ID, okay, vertical asymptotes or holes. Okay, so we're going to take those numbers that we that we rem that we remove from the domain, and we will then further categorize them as vertical asymptotes or holes. Okay, we already talked about how we're going to do that, right? If we if the number that we take out of that's from the you know that doesn't work, right? If we if it makes us divide by zero then that's going to be a vertical asymptote. But if it makes us, it goes as 0 over 0, then that indicates a hole, right? So vertical asymptote, divide by 0, hole, 0, divided by 0. Okay, so that's other things you will do there. Bless you. Okay. Um, we want to be able to identify zeros. So we, we should be able to come up with zeros. Okay. Um, and then zeros will, yeah, yeah. So that's where you set. Set function equal to zero to solve. Okay. <coughs> And the first three things we kind of already talked about, talked about up to this point, right? But then four today we're going to be looking at, okay, is like the end behavior. Okay. 
and we'll get into that more here. Okay. And this is where we can get horizontal asymptotes. This is where we can get slant asymptotes. Well, so I, I guess I spoke. Sorry, we can get horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes here. And we'll talk about those today. That's what we're going to be looking at Um, remember that M behavior, though, also talks about, you know, the as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches blank, right? And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches blank, right? So we also don't want to forget that also is how we describe M behavior. But, but we can further <coughs> kind of like categorize horizontal asymptotes and slant asymptotes. Most of the M behavior we've seen up to this point, most of the M behavior that we have seen up to this point, right? What kind of things have we put in for the blanks here? Infinity or negative infinity, exactly right. For these functions, we're gonna have numbers, like not just infinity, we're gonna have like two, five, you know, negative three, you know, be possible answers there, okay? And so that's why we, ha we have, we are gonna further categorize some of this stuff here. We still might have infinity or negative infinity, but we also could have other ones too. Okay? <clears throat> All right. Any questions so far? So that's just kind of a summary of the different components we want to be able to do, okay? Domain and range is something that, again, is going to kind of incorporate all this information we talk about right here. We should already be comfortable with doing domain restrictions, right? We technically have done that. We'll do more of it, but I mean, if, if, you know, we should know how to do it at this point, right? You're just looking for what makes your function divide by zero, right? Zeros we should also be comfortable with. You just set the function equal to zero, right? And then since it's a rational function, you'll just set the numerator equal to zero to find those zeros, okay? And then for, well, to step, take one step back, for the domain restrictions, you set your denominator equal to zero, basically, and solve, okay? And then for the end behavior, well, that's what we're gonna look at today. Okay, that's what we'll look at today for the end behavior. All right, so let's take a look at the end behavior of some functions. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. All right. So I'm going to have us consider three functions here. Consider the end behavior of. <coughs> all right, we'll do one first here. Let's do. So I have three different functions here. All right, now we're going to write out their end behaviors. We're going to write out their end behaviors. So I'll go ahead and get these ready to go. Oh, G of X. <coughs> okay. Whew. 
right? Because we're describing n behaviors, so we want to describe as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches blood, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches blood, and then same thing for g, same thing for h, right? Those are not surprise statements there, right? That's stuff we've been using, all right? And so up to this point, how have we, how have we determined the n behavior of functions? What have we done to determine the n behavior of a function up to this point? Talk about what the graph looks like. So two options, you sketch it yourself, or you use your graphing calculator. Since we're looking at three here, let's just go ahead and use our graphing calculator to do it, okay? We could sketch this one out, right? In fact, we should already have a very good picture in our mind of what one over x looks like. That's our parent function, okay? If you don't know one over x, you need to know one over x, right? Because then we can transform it and we can get all of our graphs from here, right? In fact, let's go ahead and just, let's just see, right? So for 1 over x, what happens as you go really, really far to the right? Your y values will approach what? Ooh, we're unsure. All right, I hear different answers. Well, here's 1 over x. OK, there it is. As I go really far to the right on my curve here, what y values are you approaching? 0, 0, 0. It's going down and down and down and down and down, right? If you don't believe me, go to your table, right? And you can see here that our y values are getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. But they're never going to go negative, right? And so it goes to, yes, to 0 there, OK? Likewise, what happens as we go farther and farther to the left? f of x approaches what? 0, again, yeah, 0 again, right? We're getting closer and closer to the x-axis from the bottom, though. Okay. Yeah, so 0 and 0. OK, let's take a look at number 2. Now number 2, OK, as x approaches infinity, g of x is going to approach something, right? As x approaches negative infinity, g of x will approach something here. Right. Anyone want to take a guess about what number 2 is going to be? As we go really far to the right? I'll tell you that it'll be the same number, right? As, as we go far to the right, far to the left, it'll be the same number. Anyone want to take a guess? Three, okay. Anyone else guess? No judgment. Okay. Unless you say something like I, and then be like, hmm, creative, but no. All right, here's the graph. As we go farther and farther to the right here, what does it look like? What number does it look like we're approaching? Zero, looks like it's going to go down and down and down. We can go to our table to help us out here, too, if we want. So I'm going to, if I keep going along my table here, I can see what y, what y value does it really look like we're approaching here? Probably not zero. It looks like it's one, isn't it? And if you want to get really crazy, you can actually do second window. Okay, go to your table setup, and you can actually have your table start at, like, you can have it start at, like, a million if you want to. Okay, and then when I go to my table, you can see there that stands for a million. And you can see the calculator basically gives up and says one right here. Now, if you highlight it, you can see that it's not quite one, but it is very close to one, right? And you can just see we're getting closer and closer and closer. OK. So I'll go back to start my table at one, though. Again, that's second window if you want to change where your table starts. You can also change that delta table. That changes how much you count by. So if you want to count by like 1,000, again, if we're trying to go really, really far out to, to kind of you know, show what it, likes, what it looks like to approach infinity, you can, you know, count by a thousand. You can count by a, by a millions or whatever kind of thing. So, you know, if I change the delta table to a thousand, I start at one and I'll go one thousand one, two thousand one, three thousand one, so on and so forth. That's another thing you can change. Again, I'll just change it back to the normal stuff. Long story short, though, we are approaching one. Okay, one. And then as we go to the left, what y value does it look like we're approaching? Okay. So now, does this graph does this graph look like it has a horizontal asymptote then? And if so, what is it? So does this graph look like we have a horizontal asymptote? What do we say? Does this graph look like it has a horizontal asymptote? Yes. Okay. What y value? At one, right? At one, because that's where we're approaching, right? So the y, the horizontal asymptote here, is at y equals one. Okay. I didn't ask this for the previous one, but 
Does number one have a horizontal asymptote? Go back to the graph here. Ugh. Does number one look like it has a horizontal asymptote? Does the function kind of like approach a horizontal line as we go? It does, right? What's the, what y value is it approaching? It's, it's, it's zero. It's zero. Nope, it's just zero. Zero. Y equals zero is the horizontal asymptote here. Okay. Y equals, so we have Y equals one, right? And that's because our end behavior there, right? Indicates we're going to one. For number number one, right? Zero is where our end behavior is approaching. And so we have a horizontal, we end up having a horizontal asymptote at zero, right? That's how we can indicate that there. We can see that. Okay. So then number three, well, you guys go ahead, do number three. Fill in the blanks there. And tell me if you think there's a horizontal asymptote. OK? So you guys go ahead and try number three. You can use your graphing calculator to help you, right? Please use parentheses. What's that? You could try that if you wanted to, yeah? You want to? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, graph it, see what you come up with there for the end behavior, right? What happens in this function as you go really far to the right? What, what, val what y values are we approaching? What happens in this function as we go really far to the left? What y values are we approaching? Okay. Yeah, looks good. Mm -hmm. Nope. Um, oh, you have to delete everything. Yeah, let me show you something here. So that way you don't like delete everything. You press, so you want to get that. seconds here to think about it. When Mike comes back, yes. Okay. As x approaches infinity, h of x approaches what? Infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, h of x approaches negative infinity, right? You don't believe me, right? Or you're like, how do you know? Look at your graph, OK? Try to get this all to fit. There we go. All right, as I go further and further to the right on my curve, my curve goes up and up and up and up and up and up, right? As I go further to the left on my curve, my curve goes down and down and down and down and down and down, and down right? So I'm going up to positive infinity as I go to the right. I'm going down to negative infinity as I move to the left, all right? So then, what's our horizontal asymptote here? There isn't one. There, there isn't one because, our first of all, our end behaviors disagree. They go to two different numbers, right? Here in this case, the end behavior agreed, right? They're the same. So we had a horizontal asymptote. Here again, horizontal asymptote, OK? The end behaviors don't have to agree, I should say. But they, they approach numbers, OK? They approach numbers not infinity numbers. This, however, since they both go to infinity, there isn't one. But there is, there is kind of an asymptote here, though, isn't there? Right? Like, kind of right in here. This asymptote, though, it's not horizontal. It's not vertical. It is kind of diagonal or at a slant. OK? And so we actually have a slant asymptote here. And I'll talk about how we're going to find those in just a bit. Okay. 
<clears throat> now, <clears throat> it turns out that these three functions you can kind of use as um, exemplars, okay, of the three categories um, that our rational functions can fall into, okay? So there's three different categories for the end behavior of rational functions. Category one was, is this one right here, and that's where the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, all right? So if the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, then you know you're going to have your end behavior approach zero and you'll have a, y asymptote, or a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay? You guys remember what degree is? What does degree have to do with when we're talking polynomials? The degree of a polynomial is the what? Do you remember? Well, let me, let me go over here. What's the degree of this polynomial here in the numerator? The exponent. Which, what's the degree of this one? Two. Highest power is two. Right. Okay. What's the degree of this X of this polynomial down here, what's the highest power? One, one, okay? So if you look here, right, this x has an exponent of one, so the degree of this polynomial here is one. What's the degree of this polynomial when we just have a number? The degree would be what? Zero, zero, this one's zero, okay? Because you could write x to the zero there if you wanted to. So yeah, degree one, degree zero. So in other words, the degree of the denominator is bigger than the degree of the numerator, and so we have this, um, the horizontal asymptote is zero, the end behavior goes to zero. Here for this one, how do the degree of the top and the bottom compare? In the second one, how do the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom, how do they compare? They are, the, they are what? They both have degree one, so they are the same degree. When you have the same degree, okay, and we'll talk about what happens there. The same degree, it actually is the, the like the horizontal asymptote, and then the, or, and your end behavior, it actually is the ratio of the lead coefficients, okay? So what's the lead coefficient for this top polynomial? What's the lead coefficient for this top polynomial? What number could I put out front? A what? One, right? What's the, what's the lead coefficient for the bottom polynomial? So it's one over one, one over one there. And that's why we get one here, okay? And then finally, these degrees, right? The degree on top is bigger than the degree of the bottom. And so that means that we will, are in, or we will have no horizontal asymptote, okay? But since the degree on top is exactly one more than the degree of the bottom, we have a slant asymptote, okay? A slant asymptote, all right? So let me summarize this here. Let me see, do I have a neat way of summarizing this? I don't think I necessarily do. Yeah, we'll just do this. Okay. Okay. So, to summarize here, okay. <clears throat> if the, so degree, I'm going to abbreviate here, degree of um, numerator is less than degree of denominator, okay, if the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, which is what we had up here, right? The degree of the numerator was 0, degree of the denominator was 1, so the numerator's degree was less than the degree of the denominator, then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, okay? So here's case 1. Case 2 the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. Okay. Then we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals the lead coefficient of the numerator over the lead coefficient of the denominator. Sorry, I'll get that squeezed in there. There we go. Okay. So if, you, if the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, then the ratio of the lead coefficients is your horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote occurs the ratio of the lead coefficients which is also then your end behavior.
Okay? Got that okay? Yes? Everyone see it okay? Mike, you're okay? You can see it okay? Oh, first part? Sorry. Right there? And then lastly, so again, we have our three, our three categories, right? The numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. The numerator equals the degree of the denominator. And so the last one is the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. OK? No horizontal asymptote in that case. Okay, but slant asymptote if um, but slant asymptote if degree of numerator is one more than degree of denominator. Okay. To the right, you said? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. And so we'll do a couple examples here. A couple examples here so, so you can see it. Ready to do a few examples then? Anyone still writing this? <coughs> no? Okay. So then let's take a look at. Uh, I'm not exhausted. No, I'm confused. All right, here we go. Let's identify any horizontal asymptotes or slant asymptotes for some of these functions here. Okay, we'll just do a couple examples. So f of x equals 1 over x minus 3. <coughs> okay. What's the degree of the numerator? Degree of the numerator is 0. What's the degree of the denominator? 1. Okay. Degree of the numerator is 0, degree of the denominator is 1, so therefore the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, which means we have a horizontal asymptote where? At y equals 0, right? y equals 0. Okay. Now, while we're doing this analysis, we don't want to forget about all the other stuff we've talked about. So, for example, 
what x value here, what x value is a domain is in is restricted from our domain. What x value is not allowed here? Three. Okay? And so therefore we would have a vertical asymptote at x equals three. Right? At x equals three. Because that three, right, is not going to give us zero over zero. It's going to give us one divided by zero when I plug three. Right? So I plug three in, I get one over zero. That's the asymptote. <coughs> So we want to keep these things, you know, we have kind of two different things that we do here. We have horizontal slant asymptotes. Though horizontal and slant asymptotes are kind of figured out together, right? And then vertical asymptotes are figured out separately. So yes, they're both asymptotes. We figure them out separately because they're, they're kind of two different kinds of asymptotes. Yeah, none, yeah. You will never have a situation, Julian, where you're gonna have both a slant asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. They are also mutually exclusive. Just like vertical asymptotes and holes, exclusive from one another, slant asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, exclusive. You'll never have one, you'll never have both, one or the other. Okay? Or neither, I should say, or neither. All right, let's try another one here. Um, goodness, I had better examples. Here we go. All right, how about um, <coughs> so, Michael G. What's the degree of the numerator here, Michael? What's the highest power in the numerator? Two. Two. What's the look? What's the highest power in the denominator, Michael G? Two. Two. So the Top and bottom have the same degree. Okay, let's go back to what we were talking about earlier, right? What do we do then? What kind of horizontal asymptote do we have? Degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. So it is the lead coefficients, right? So you take the lead coefficient of the numerator and over the lead coefficient of the denominator, that's where why your horizontal asymptote is. So what is our lead coefficient in the numerator here? Anybody? <coughs> Two, right? Two. All right, so we have a horizontal asymptote. And y equals 2 over, what's the lead coefficient for our denominator? 1, right? A 1. So 2 over 1, or just 2, if you like. OK. Are there any slant asymptotes here? No. Easy answer, right? If you have a horizontal asymptote, you'll never have a slant asymptote. What about vertical asymptotes here? Possibly, right? We want to check to see if our denominator ever equals 0. And we want to factor it here. So it does factor, I believe. Let me see here. So yes, you'll have to remember how to do factoring and stuff like that, too, potentially here. So um, the denominator factors to be, what, uh, x minus 3 and then x plus 2, I think. OK? And then the numerator factors to be, let me see, um, minus 3, ooh. That would be a, if I can write this down right. I don't think the numerator does factor. Never mind. But we don't need the numerator factor. We just need the denominator factor, really, because we're trying to find vertical asymptotes. Yeah. So yeah, what x values are going to give us problems here? Three and two. negative two. Yeah. So we're going to have vertical asymptotes at three and at negative two here. Okay. And again, why is that? Because I can plug, if I plug 3 in the numerator up here, I won't get 0, right? I get, uh, let's see, that's going to be 9, 18, um, minus 9, plus 9, that, will, that won't be 0. And then negative 2 squared is 4, 8, um, plus, yeah, 6, and plus 9, that won't be 0 either. So 3 and negative 2, neither one's going to be 0 over 0. They're both just divided by zeros. Okay. All right, we'll do one more here. <coughs> How about um, yeah, okay, sure, let's do it this way. Be 
careful here. What's the numerator's degree in number three? It's two. It's two. Okay. Wait a minute, Mr. Lemire. I see x to the first, and I see x to the first. Why isn't the numerator's degree one? What are we going to have to do here? What do we do? Multiply them, right? X and x is going to make x squared. Okay. It's going to make x squared. So if I were to multiply this out, I would get x squared plus 5 minus 1, so plus 4x, and then minus 5 all over x plus 1. So the degree of the numerator is really 2. What's the degree of the denominator? 1, OK? So the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. No horizontal asymptote. But since the degree of the numerator is 1 more than the degree of the denominator, we have a slant asymptote. Okay. How do we find the slant asymptote, though? The slant asymptote is going to be like a, a, a linear equation. It's going to be a line. Well, to find a slant asymptote, and this is important. If you guys were tuning me out, you think you got it. You need to tune me back in right now. To find a slant asymptote, okay, um, long divide the function, okay, and ignore the remainder. And that will give you the equation for your slant asymptote. So in other words here, if I take x plus 1 and divide that into x squared plus 4x minus 5, okay, if I do the division there, my answer without the remainder will be the equation for my slant asymptote. Okay, so what times x will give me x squared? x. And x times 1 will give me 1x. I'm going to subtract that quantity. Okay. But instead of subtracting, I'm going to add the opposites. x squared will cancel. 4 and negative 1 make 3x. Okay. And then I will um, have to multiply by 3, right? x times 3 here. And then 3 times 1 is 3. And again, add the opposites. Negative 5 and negative 3 make negative 8. Throw out the remainder. There's the equation for your slant asymptote right there. Y equals x plus 3. Okay. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you in the graphing calculator. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to graph this function here. <coughs> Typed it in. Okay, if you, in my y1 there, okay, I typed in this version of it right here. x squared plus 4x minus 5 all over x minus 1, x plus 1, I mean. And then I'll also graph x plus 3, the slant asymptote. All right? So there's the function. And there's the slant asymptote. And look at that. Okay? Fits right in there. Okay? Let me get the thick. There you go. So again, function. And there's that slant Asymptote right there. Okay. So, questions on any of that? Easy peasy. All right. Now, let me get you guys some practice here. <coughs> Bless. All right. So we're going to go back to um, eight dash two.
right, so 8 2 again. Which is again on page 300. Okay. I'm going to have you numbers 8, 9, and 10. <coughs> okay. So I want you to 1. ID all, or ID any holes slash vertical asymptotes. And then two, ID any horizontal asymptotes slash slant asymptotes. Okay. And then, I guess that's good enough. Yeah, that's good enough for me right now. Okay? So for 8, 9, and 10, I want you to identify any holes, vertical asymptotes, and also identify any horizontal or slant asymptotes as well. And then if there's a slant asymptote, find its equation. Okay? So if you find a slant asymptote, find its equation, please. All right? And we'll go, we'll stop, we'll do that.